Oh yeah. Oh yes. All right, so welcome in to the How to YouTube panel. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some loud noises right now, nothing that should blow out any eardrums, but uh, we're, we're going to, we're gonna trick everybody. Oh. We're gonna make them think that this is the coolest panel ever, and they're gonna get jealous while sitting outside and be like, well, what the heck? I want to join in. So, so here's what we're gonna do. All right. Wait, what are we gonna do? And we're gonna make some noise. So, for starters, let me know where you guys are at right now. Make just make some noise. Just make noise. Woo! All right. See, see, that's a start. That's a start. Okay. Now I'm gonna go. Oh, and you go. Oh, oh, oh. and then you go. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. This Whoa. is how to YouTube. Everyone outside is I'll missing it. Well. You're really missing a good panel. Whoa. Aren't you getting jealous Everybody out there? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. You're missing out for not entering this. Why room. are they leaving? They're all walking out to oh. Ty, I'm sorry. We just scared everyone away. <laughs> so so welcome in. I'm gonna make a, a quick announcement outside just so everybody um, because there, there are, I heard a few people being like, I think YouTube is next. But, uh, but yeah, thank you for coming out. Thank you for coming to Alicon. And we'll be kicking this off in just a minute. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Don't worry. I'll fill time. I'll fill time. Fill time. I'll, I'm, I'm filling time. All right. No, I'm going to go. Wait, 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 wait. This is How to YouTube by AC Racemus and Viva Revery. We are here to tell you how to make a YouTube channel, which will get you maybe subscribers. Doesn't happen all the time, uh, which is which is unfortunate but also not the point as we will probably detail down the line there, there is a lot of nuance and 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 figuring out how exactly to to splay your youtube channel out onto the internet to make people uh uh watch something that you will enjoy i'm sorry i'm hitting off myself i'm the only person talking on this panel so i need to think up everything that needs to be said Ever, what? Thumbnail, yes, but ah, that's a good point. Good, uh, tip number one, thumbnails are everything. If you have a good thumbnail, then somebody will click on your video. If your thumbnail is not good, then they will not click on your video, even if the video is the best video ever. So, it always is. I mean, well, not always. There's, there's, there's also the flip side where your thumbnail is too good and then people go in the video and they say, bump in the microphone and they say, oh, uh, I didn't, yeah, this is clickbait. This isn't what I expected would happen. Like such as, for example, calling a video an animation and going into the video and it's not an animation. Clear, obvious, easy example. What is going on outside? Is that race? That might be race. Oh my God, that is race, isn't it? Hey. We have some action. Did we get some success? Yay! We've got somebody. By the way, thank you to my chant train. That was excellent. When I say you, you say tube. You. You. When I say you, you say tube. You. You. All right, we're going to work on the volume levels a little bit later on. But welcome, everybody. This is uh, my first official panel here at... Uh, Alicon 2019, first ever in Australia. Yay. Thank you so much for coming out. So, how are y'all doing? Good? <laughs> oh yeah. No, I know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a projectionist. Oh, everyone does like. So, uh, I'm here to tell Hello you. Hello guys, welcome to the YouTube panel. See, but I'm also not used to having like this good of like an AV group oh, that's like, yeah, no. can we give, Multi's by the way, fantastic. a big shout out to all the staff here yes. at Alicon. A big round of applause to all of them. So, uh, yeah, um, I know that uh, Viva and I are super excited to be here. Uh, this is a how to YouTube panel. So yeah. the way that we've done uh, one of these at other conventions is that Essentially, it is a, it's a panel to kind of help people if you have any questions in regards to YouTube or if you're getting a channel going. But that's not all we're going to be talking about here. If you have random questions, if you have weird stories or, or whatnot that you want us to share with you, by all means, we are here to share whatever strangeness you want to find out. So, uh, yeah, and we will have a Q&A mic here. So if anyone yes. does have questions, we'll get to that in a little bit here. But 
First, we'll do our, our intros. We're here to have fun. You guys yes. are here to have fun, right? Here to have, some of you are th- still thinking about it. We're like, <laughs> I think I'm here to have fun, but I'm not entirely sure. Mm. Viva, are you here to have fun? I am here to have fun and preferably some food. If I don't get... We just ate KFC. Look. You were saying saying that Americans eat a lot. No, I'm saying saying that if we we can have food, we can have fun, we need both. I don't need food right now, but I will later, and I did did previously, so therefore. I have way too much jet lag for whatever this conversation is. All right, all right. Um, So, yeah, so I'm AC Ray's best. Hello, everybody. Doing good, doing real good. Um, uh, again, I'm I'm from America, from Los Angeles, uh, out in California, and um, I started my YouTube channel um, before actually I, I ever got into the show or the fandom. Um, I initially had this plan that I was going to make a bunch of Chippendale Rescue Ranger videos. Anyone here? Anyone here seen Chippendale Rescue Rangers? Yeah, you can make some noise by the way. Like when I say that, anyone seen the show? Hey. Like I said, I'm gonna warm you guys up. I'm you're not gonna <laughs> wait. So, um, uh, so yeah. So I that's where the AC even showed up in my name because there was a site called the Acorn Cafe that I was like, oh, I'm going to be making a lot of these videos. So that's what the AC stands for. And uh, yeah, it stayed really relevant for the one video that I did for the show. <laughs> and then about a year later, I got into My Little Pony and was seeing a lot of fan content and whatnot. And I got excited because I was like, this looks like a lot of fun to be a part of. The fandom looks. Like a lot of fun. I love the content that I was seeing, and I'm like, I want to be a part of this. Um, and that's that's essentially where things really kicked off for my channel. Was uh, of course the uh, Bronies React. Anyone seen Bronies React? Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, and uh, we'll be having a panel for that also tomorrow. Uh, and that those uh, those even ramp up on the silliness and kind of the crazy stories and what have you, especially with Viva here. So, um, so yeah, and, uh, and yeah, so that's essentially where the YouTube stuff started for me. Viva, what about My you? My turn. Okay, let me tell you how, uh, how, how I introduced myself to YouTube. Well, first, I found a website where I, could, where I found a ninja guy saying, hello, this is how to be a ninja. It was, it was like, this was like 2000, like 2007, 8, I, I feel, it, whatever. Anyway, so the point is, is that I eventually said I want to make some videos and I found a community called the, the like, the, the, I, the I am group or the I'm a group. Um, there was, uh, so, so the, essentially it was a bunch of like channels dedicated to role playing as different uh, Smash Bros characters. And I chose Toon Link because nobody had chosen Toon Link before. So I made a channel called I'm a Toon Link. Um, And I used it for a while, this was, I was like 13, so I eventually realized that like, okay, if I'm going to make this my main YouTube channel, this is probably a silly name to go with. Because you no longer were a Toon Link. No, I'm not necessarily. So so you went from I'm a Toon Link to I'm not a Toon Link. Especially considering Smash Bros. Brawl was the last (laughs) Smash Bros. game I played as Toon Link in, and then I didn't like him in Smash 4. Anyway, so, um, uh, in... uh, so, in, so in, in the Pony fandom, I started making uh, a couple of silly toy videos. The first one, one I made was called I Am Princess Celestia using this toy in which I pointed it towards the camera and I pressed this button over and over again. <laughs> Flying is so much fun. And she says a, l- a bunch of little, little silly things. Let's hear another one. I love when you comb my hair. Yeah, there you go. That's what Celestia That's says. A, so you mean that we didn't even need to bring Nicole out here all no, along? No, 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 no. <laughs> I've, got, I've got that covered. Um, so this Celestia I used as, as a silly little joke thing, and it got like thousands of views more than any other video I made up until that point. I'm like, okay, let's do more. And I bought more toys. Um, I was a little too frivolous with my money. I had, I got myself a collection that was way too big. Um, I want to say not soon, like shortly after that, I'm like, okay, this is actually getting somewhere. I don't want the name I'm a Toon Link anymore. It's a, it's a very silly and mouthy name and like it doesn't mean anything. Um, so I changed it to Viva Reverie. That is the name I go by now. Uh, thank you. Uh, um, Thanks, and, mom. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and um, I used this horse as as my as my my character, which, if you'll notice, I accidentally stained with some sharpie down here. Ignore that. Um, 
And uh, I eventually, after making a bunch of these toy videos, said, I want to upgrade, let's try some new things. And I started animating, which is a weird leap, I will admit. But I, at that point, had learned how to use like Flash um, to do some animating stuff and said, OK, well, I guess I could turn this into a video thing. And I did, and that caught on too, and now that's what I do. That's the story of my YouTube channel in a nutshell. That was good. That was real yeah. good. Yes. Oh. Yes. I so if there's anyone else that would like to admit that they have a problem, please. Uh, <laughs> no. So um, uh, I'm curious. Anybody, uh, by a raise of hands, uh, who else has a YouTube channel? YouTube channel. Hey. YouTube channel. YouTube channels all over the place. Uh, curious, like, what, what is your YouTube channel? What do you do? Okay. Blind what? Reactor. What, what do you do? So music you channel. you manage two music channels. What about you? PMV's anthology. Who else? Who else had a hand up here? What do you do? I don't oh. know. <laughs> you have one video, right? And what is that one video? Hey! So you it's already a have start. the intro. It's a start. You yeah. already have your sales pitch. Now you just need. What about what about uh, you behind? Gaming videos. So, so again, obviously, as you can just hear here in the crowd, a lot of variation. Um, mm -hmm. Anyone here who doesn't have a YouTube channel who's like, I'm thinking about starting a YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay. All yeah, right. We, we, got got a a couple. Couple. we got a couple. Any ideas? Oh, yeah? Mm. That covers everything. So, <laughs> cool. Cool. What about, what about you? Okay. Crafts and arts and, right. and all that stuff. Teaching people uh, some of the craft and whatnot. Oh, yeah. and teaching yourself as you go. See, that could be cool. So, um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of uh, ideas, a whole bunch of different approaches to YouTube. There's the one thing that I've discovered over years of not only doing it myself, um, but working with a whole bunch of people that also are YouTubers and, and whatnot, and some have found success, some haven't found that success. Um, is that there's there's almost no exact like right answer no, no. of how to YouTube, which means that this whole panel is a fraud mm -hmm. and you've all been duped. So, but essentially, like I said, we're here to kind of share some stories or advice or whatnot. So, if anybody has any questions, we do have a Q and A mic. And how do we want people to line up with this mic? All right, okay. down the aisle. Right. So what we'll do. I can help you out, so I will help you. But does anyone want to form a line? Here, I'll be the first one. I'll ask the first question. You don't want to get okay. There we go. Thank you yeah. for not making me feel awkward. Hello. Uh, what is your question? Um, uh, I forgot my question. Oh. I'll let you go. Line back up when you when you remember. <laughs> oh, there goes race. Um, oh. Hey, this is this is expert YouTubing in action. It takes like ten years of, of experience to get this good. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, yeah, you know what I say? Go ahead and uh, ask your question. How do you record in summer? How do I record in summer? <laughs> That's a good, really question. All right. Uh, Wait, this is the most Australian question. <laughs> Let me tell you how confused I was when I looked at what the weather was going to be like this weekend. I'm like, okay, every picture I've ever seen of Australia looks really hot. Okay, so it's just going to be hot. Australia looks hot. And then I got... It's not wet. Yeah, well, see, I didn't realize Australia even had winter. I thought that was a joke. And then I looked at, I luckily looked right before I left and went, oh, I should be packing pants, yeah. not just swimsuits. Yeah. They wouldn't let don't me jump like, in the ocean. Don't be like Homer Simpson and packed winter gear while going and visit Australia and realizing summer hemisphere opposite. Yeah, like, oh. see, I, it caught I mean, me off I guard. I wouldn't have stopped you jumping in the ocean. It's just, I suggested you probably should. It was a very strong suggestion, mm -hmm. in fact. So, um, so I'll let you take this one of how do you film during summer? Uh... Well, there was actually a, a peer, there was for a Bernie's React. I specifically remember I said, "I'm sorry, I cannot record. It is very hot. I need to wait until either the the, the um, temperature goes down, or I just have to record with a fan on." Um, and 
With that in mind, I say uh, avoid it. <laughs> but, but otherwise, um, if you absolutely do need to, uh, angle your fan away from where your microphone is angled, well, I, which I guess it depends on what kind of microphone you have. I'm lucky. I bought a very expensive uh, Sennheiser MKH416 boom mic, uh, shotgun mic, which I can have like way off camera, point it towards me, and it only picks me up. It's very nice. Um, so if you have the money, do that, and then just have a fan pointing at you and have, making your hair do this all day. Um, which, uh, but which it, it is a solution. I think, yeah, it's, it's an issue that you just have to deal with as it comes. If you can get away with filming, like, I, get, I guess there's, like, you can film it, like, when it's dark, when it's not as hot, when it's, like, when the sun's down, the, the sun isn't... Does it cool going. down here? Like, when it's hot, uh, does it, it cool down? The interesting thing is that, uh, so I live in Canberra, so I can, I can speak out, out of experience. I think it's similar in Adelaide, where it is hot during the day, it is cold during the night, which is very nice, and I very much appreciate it. When I go up to oh. Brisbane, oh, it is hot during the day, and it's still hot during the night, and I hate it. But, but there are some nights here, though. And that, yeah, there's, there are some nights here where it could be middle of midnight, it could be 30, 32 degrees, yeah. and if it's muggy, it feels like 45. So, so you need to understand that when I hear it's 32 degrees, oh, oh, I'm, right. hearing, I'm hearing Five that Fahrenheit. it is, it is oh, the freezing you. temperature <laughs> for oh, yeah. water, oh. Why, which is the same thing when there, you know, I was asked, oh, so how hot was it? when you left home and I said we were in the hundreds and everybody looked at me like I was the craziest person <laughs> in the world. Oh, oh sorry. So uh, between 105 and 100. See, that doesn't sound fun. And but try 100 degrees Celsius because no, that's where I came from. I, no, try, try, no, for your point of view, the hardest summer here was almost, for your point of view, almost 120. Mm. 100, I've been in 120 four, degree weather. For a week or nearly, nearly two Not weeks that long straight. though. No, it was yeah. just a day. One thing here, if, that, if you have the money, you flee to the, to the Nova Hemisphere during the summer to escape the heat. So you run away is what everyone's telling you. <laughs> just run much. away. So one thing to, to go off of what Viva was saying also, um, if you are utilizing a fan or something, a lot of, uh, like, if you're using just a camcorder, that's, that's where I actually record most of my audio off of for my videos. Um, so if you don't have, like, a, an expensive mic or anything to work off of, just kick that microphone. That's right. Yeah. Um, the one thing that uh, a lot of the camcorders have built in is uh, the microphone is directional. So if you also set up a fan behind, say, the, the camcorder, you might still get a hum or something, but it's also more comfortable. And plus, I've noticed that with ambient noise, if it's light enough, sometimes just having kind of like light music playing with what you're saying can also help cover up some of your that background. That is a good idea. Stuff. Or noise removal, which I don't like using because it sometimes muddies the audio up a bit. But essentially, if you have like a white noise, um, which can also be like a bad white noise, which happens with, bad, with low quality microphones where like in the background there's like a constant and it sucks and I hate it. Um, Nails on a chalkboard just yeah, going exactly. for the whole time. Um, you go in like a free program like Audacity can do this where you say, okay, take this white noise and get rid of it. And it works. I don't like using it if only because like I said, it, like some of the highs go away. And, uh, um, and uh, but otherwise it is a way to get it. one okay here's here's a an, a tip regarding uh vid, how like people perceive video quality um sometimes pe like if your content is good it can like surpass the need for good quality obviously if you can strive for good quality video but it's not necessarily a necessity if you want like uh, if you want to make like good content anyway like some of like like even like some channels uh, start out with like just like a good idea even if like uh, their equipment isn't the best if their idea is like good fun and creative it can produce like really like entertaining video and then with that you can say like okay well this is caught on I can now improve my setup and make it sound good and like get, get myself that a thousand dollar microphone um, so that's my suggestion yeah. so thank you for your question yeah no problem all right Next question, and then we gotta fill that line. Yeah, come on, someone's yeah. gotta have a question. There oh, you we go. Have else. And like I said, oh. it doesn't have to be. And, and I'll make sure that we get to you too. Right. I have multiple questions. If that's of any help. Actually, you're talking to the Okay. 
Um, I think my main question would be, if you want to do two very drastically different styles of video, would it be better to just put them both on the same channel and hope that people are okay with that, or do that's two separate channels? That's a good question, because that's a question I've had to confront myself. Um, because I, once upon a time, uh, yeah, I did my toy videos. I eventually transitioned to the, uh, to the animated videos. Um, and obviously what I eventually went with is I'm sticking with this one channel because this is where my fan base is. And my thought is there will be a decent, a sizable portion of your fan base who will come to you for your style of content. Like despite the fact that I transitioned from two completely different like media forms, it was still m like my kinds of jokes. It was still um, like my style of humor, which like, like, so, like, comes out with that. If you want to be like extremely like professional, you can be like, I have a series of videos. Episode one, episode two, episode three are the only things uploaded on this channel. You can do that. Um, it's just that I think having like a an, a free for all platform like I use my channel for um, is definitely like a like a good place to just be like, all right, so here's a 10 second whatever and it's fun and it's something that I made and check it out. And then people will be like, yeah, this is nice. Um, so my suggestion is if you want to make more than one kind of thing, um, if you have like two different channels, there's a good chance that that'll just ha create like a divided fan base as opposed to like one big core one where like interactions can be made between like, oh, I, I watched your other videos and I liked them, and I didn't check out that other series until recently. I'm like, oh, you know what, I like this too, like that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, it's, um, for me, I have one of the most random YouTube channels that right. I know <laughs> of. I, you know, on one side I have Bronies React, on another side I have PMVs, which, you know, MLP, MLP, not too different. Then over here I have Convlogs, still pretty MLP related, but, you know, it, it can vary from convention to convention. Over here, I have the low budgets, which is me doing demolition yeah. derbies and destroying <laughs> cars, all on the same channel. Um, and, and one thing I've seen a lot of successful YouTube channels do is uh, utilize the separation, but you, I feel like you almost want to wait until you're... Like, it seems like in a lot of cases, um, like for me, my channel is, in a lot of cases, a hobby. So, so it's not like I, I live or die or, or don't eat because of a you know, certain uh, success rate. Um, but with that, if I, like for example, if I wanted to start doing gaming videos at this point, I would separate that to a different channel. Uh, because yeah. I feel like it helps when you sometimes have a bit of a following or you've kind of started off and people get to know who you are on one channel and then you progress to the next bit of content and say, hey, so I'm doing this and even if it's at a different channel, still letting people know like, here's the direction you wanna go, I have multiple channels and then kind of build yourself that way. Okay. I think that might help. Right, I, I didn't think about gaming channels. That's actually a very yeah. good point because so with- what I, what, I, what I currently do is gaming, but I wanna expand into more- Right, because the- pro talking and story stuff? Yeah, one mm -hmm. of the issues with a gaming channel is... YouTube it, hates us? There's a, well, sure. <laughs> YouTube hates everyone. Um, <laughs> if you have a gaming channel, you will have lots and lots and lots of videos because they're like... But, but then you, if you want to make like, uh, stuff with like a, high, like a higher production value, those take more time than just recording yourself making a video about... Uh, or, uh, recording yourself playing a game. Um, likewise, if you have like gaming video, gaming video, gaming video, gaming video, very high quality, three year project, please watch, gaming video, gaming video, it'll get like um, sunk by everything else like and, and like be lost in the mess. That is a context where it does make sense to have a separate channel. I think like gaming videos in particular are like the exception to the rule where I say, oh, it's good to have like a free, free for all like sort of channel, but have a separate Gaming channel. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, we draw the line. We here. draw the line at gaming channel. It, it, it's it's just because I feel like if you have like something um, that you really want to do, uh, and you present it, and it like it it just gets lost in a sea of other videos. Um, that can be like that can be un unincentivizing. What's the word? Uh, um, and and so likewise, I. S 
Yeah, I, I, I definitely say have two different channels for that in particular. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, that context, it, you know, it could just be contextual. Maybe I'm just stupid and think, oh, always do the we, free one. We know that we're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They're just figuring it out. So. Yeah, that, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's All right. funny. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Our, <laughs> well, thank um, you guys. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for your question. So, uh, in the front row, I know that you had a question that you wanted to ask. Um, what do you do if someone else on it? I, I'm very loud anyway. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. What do you do if someone else has the same YouTube name as you? Oh, Whoa. you find them and, and then you <laughs> decapitate tell them, them. No, okay. you know. Okay. You, you say, I want your name, and they'll give it to you. Um, <laughs> this is funny, actually, because uh, when I started my YouTube channel, um, it was just going to be race best. That was, that was it. There was not going to be any AC, because then everyone wouldn't have to ask me, what does the AC stand for? <laughs> um, but the, the thing about it is that uh, when I tried to make that channel way back in the day, the whole reason the AC showed up was because it told me that the name was taken. The annoying part about it is when I tried to look up the YouTube channel Race Best, there was nothing that showed it even existed. So, YouTube it, didn't even tell me other people had taken it. Yeah. Two other people have the same name as me, and I only figured it out when I had finished setting it up, and then thought, oh, maybe someone else has got the same name as me. And yeah. it, it does happen. Yeah, uh, it's it 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 does happen, and unfortunately, the answer is you're gonna have to adjust the name. Um, it's un unless YouTube's changed the way they they allow named channels. I think you can just change your name whenever you want. There might be like a limit, actually. I remember when I went to change my name from I'm a Tune Link to V for Every. It's just like you can only do this once. Are you sure? I'm like, uh, okay, I'll I'll make sure I'm doubly triply sure about this. Um, yeah, I think the thing with um, having two channels with the same name is that, like, because... So, like, you're, you're, just to double-check, your channel already exists, yeah. and it has the name. I created it, but two other people had created theirs years before me, and I didn't even know they existed, and then I created mine. Do they... Do, later. do you... Is it because you want to change your name, or is it just, like, you're just concerned that someone else has that same name? Yeah. Oh, right. uh, just let them send their legal team after you whenever they get to that point. No, I, I see the cringe face there. And I, yeah. I'm joking, but like, I, don't, I don't think the problem is that if YouTube is allowing multiple similar channel names, that's on YouTube. That's not your fault. Mm. So I'd say, I'd, say, I'd say maybe just don't even worry about it. Like, honestly, like, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, with that one video where you're telling people what you're going to be doing. so I say there is an exception to that rule, and that is, oh, I made this really cool name, uh, and I thought it was original. I, I called my channel PewDiePie, and turns out somebody else already has Is that your that name? name? Is your channel is name PewDiePie? <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Yeah, because, Good <laughs> because the issue there is that PewDiePie, as someone who exists, has a lot of prominence, makes frequent, frequent content, um, and if you try and start your channel named PewDiePie, you will be overshadowed by them. If, you, if there's more than one person with the same name, but only one of those people is making content, like really frequently, then yours will stand out in like search results mm -hmm. uh, and the such. So you can, uh, you, you can be concerned that other people have the same name. Wh I, do they, have you seen whether they make content frequently at all? There you go. So You're it's fine. probably fine. Yeah. You won't have an issue, especially yeah, exactly. if you start garnering an audience. Um, you know, once you start putting videos out and decide what you want to do. Um, no matter what, when they Google uh, that name, they will find your channel. Yeah, your stuff will be popping up. So I'd say, I'd say you're probably fine. And if you do decide down the road that, oh, maybe I should change the name, that option, I think, is always there, like Viva said. Um, it, it's you not can, like you can keep changing it. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. There's also, like, if... Worst comes to worst, you can do a rebrand. I did a rebrand. People still call me I'm a Toon Link. I have I, I like discontinued that name a very, very long time ago. So doing a rebrand doesn't work 100% of the time. But especially if your channel is relatively small, you can rebrand pretty safely, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, 
So if you are really, really concerned that somebody else has the same name as you, um, uh, if you were to look through different alternative names, Google it and be like, am I really sure this time? And um, you'll be fine. But I still think it wouldn't be an issue for your case in particular. So, so to finish off this question, though, I'm curious. What is your channel name? Strawberry Heart. Strawberry Heart. Right. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, yep. I, I'd say I'd say go for it, and if you ever decide you do want to change it, like Viva said, there's that op that option's always there. Now we've got a line. Look at yeah. this. Good work, everybody. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, give yourself a round of applause. Um, hello. Hello. Make sure I'm talking into it now. Hello. 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 I like to think that I'm fairly good at public speaking. I was the president of a rodent club and did lots of talks and genetics and all of that stuff. But every time I go and try and take a video of myself talking about these same things without anyone there listening, I'm like, I'm a crazy person talking to myself. How do you conquer doing the same presenting stuff but without having an audience? Because I'm great with an audience, Isn't but when I'm funny? alone, I'm I've weird. I've heard this. I've heard this before from other YouTubers. Um, some of my friends are like, it feels so awkward talking to piece of machinery that's just looking at me and you'd think it would almost be easier. Yeah. Um, I mean, the biggest thing that, that I know that's helped me because I, I never really felt that awkwardness, but I think it's just because I did it so much and I do it so much. Yep. I mean, just... The practice the, makes perfect. Yeah, and yeah. just the other day, I was walking down Adelaide filming myself and I see all these Australian people, I can only assume they were Australians, <laughs> are just like... I'm like, what, do people not vlog in Australia, or is it just like me? It, it's it's prob. Is it really that? Okay, so maybe that's it. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, really, it's it's just a matter, kind of like with public speaking. Um, the biggest way that I know most people get over the fear or the anxiety of public speaking is just doing do it. it, putting yeah. yourself into that. So I'd say just keep doing it. All right. Thank you. Hello. Hi, um, I know there's a lot of opinions about it, but what would you say personally is your favorite or the best uh, video editing software? Video editing software. Would recommend. Um, I'm team Vegas Pro, if only because it was my first one and I never changed and it's fine and I've- You never forget your first. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, pretty much. Well, actually, no. Technically, it wasn't my first. Windows Movie Maker? Mo Windows Movie Maker yep. was my first. Yeah. And I think what eventually made me switch over was the fact that you can't edit things like with frame precision. It's like if you want to make something really, really short, the shortest you can make it is like five frames, and like that, like that ticked me off a bit. That's More than, what. Uh, oh, I mean, right. it's it's like if if I'm trying to do like something fancy and precise and perfect, and like it doesn't let me be precise. I like being on the number with my things. Yeah. Um. Even back then, it did it didn't let me do that. Um. Yeah, uh, re the reason why I, I keep calling it Sony Vegas, they haven't been un under Sony's name for a very long time now. Now they're under like ma uh, ma Magix, I think is the company. Oh, I didn't even know this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I keep thinking Sony Vegas. No, it's not Sony Vegas. Vegas Pro. That's what they call themselves now. Anyway, um, but yeah, it was, it, it, it does everything that a editing software should give you the options to do. It's got all those plugins. It's got um, uh, like oh, export any all the options. It, it gives you all the options, and, it, and it's got a nice interface. And I like uh, I've I've memorized all the shortcuts, that kind of thing. Um, and I have no idea how to use Premiere or. Uh, all the other Mac equivalents of software. They're hard to they're hard to pick up. Um, it depends. I mean, it, it. I guess like my question back is, uh, do you know what kind of videos you want to make? Yes. Uh, what kind? Well, like probably vlog style videos, I reckon. Vlog style? Yeah. Okay, so for for me, I I do a fair amount of vlogs. Um, I'm also Vegas Pro, uh, and again, it's because that's the program. I don't know how I ended up starting with it, but that's what I ended up really getting into. Again, I didn't start with it. Movie Maker. Then I went to something called like Nero or something. I don't, I don't, I can't remember even what it was called. 
my mom bought this editing program and was like, oh, great, now we can edit all of our home videos together. <laughs> and I'm the only one who used it making, like, stupid movies and stuff. Hey, you're still making home videos then. And still making stupid video, just everything. Yeah. So, um, But, yeah, and then... Uh, yeah, so Vegas Pro, I, I just I love the interface of it. It's I feel like, and again, it's it's easy now to say like, oh, I feel like it's really easy to use. But I know people who work with um, like After Effects, and that's the kind of program that if you're looking to get into like more heavy heavy video editing or or like special effects special is special effects, yeah. crazy type PMVs where you got stuff flying at you all over the place. Uh, After Effects is better for that. Definitely. That's yeah. After Effects is really good with uh, like masking tools and all that. But if you're looking at vlog stuff, um, Sony Vegas is fine. Yeah. It's not Sony Vegas. It's Vegas. Vegas Pro, Pro is fine. So. Um, and there's there's you you I know that they do like humble bundles with it from time to time. Yes, so in fact, you can get it so for cheap. Very highly uh, recommend that. And also, not to mention, one of the biggest reasons why I chose Vegas Pro over Premiere is Premiere is a subscription service, and I hate subscription services. Vegas Pro is a is a permanent license. Buy it once and you're done. You can just keep it forever. Mm -hmm. It works. Oh, you can pirate it. I I don't advocate for it. If you have the money to purchase it, what a dirty word. <laughs> Pirates. Uh, uh, but yeah, but thank you for your question. Yeah. Hello. Uh, hey. Hello, guys. Hi. Hello. Jeez, I am way too tall for this. Okay. So, two questions, if you may. Mm -hmm. uh, one serious, one just for fun. Good. So, okay. <laughs> all right. So, I gave Nicole this question earlier, um, and I want to give you guys the same chance to answer this one. Um, as content creators, um, entertainers, I feel that there comes a time when you have that wow moment where you realize that you're making a big difference in people's lives yeah um share us a story each of a time when you had that just wow moment while it's like whoa <laughs> i think um like showing up to a convention and just like constantly having like every now and then you just get like people are just like oh I, I'm, I'm sorry am i bothering you it's like I, i'm so nervous to be able to see it like that like that kind of response is just like wow I, I, I've made these fun videos and people like, like stumble over their words when they see me. And like, that's like, like crazy to me. Um, like every time it happens uh, and it, it's, it's, it, I, I don't know how to articulate it beyond like it being just like a crazy experience that I can just, I can travel all the way around the world and um, go to a location and, be, and just wander around and constantly being stopped by people. Wow, I sound I, I sound like I, I I'm like being pestered, but no, uh, being stopped like like very very frequently. It's just like oh my god, it's Viva, and that's really like that's that's a like it's a moment. It's it's always it, it, I never get tired of it. Um, yeah, it's I don't know what what, what else to add on to that <laughs> besides it just being great. So um, one thing. As a content creator, when I got into this stuff, I've always done it for fun. I've always done it to hopefully make others laugh, but I'm also like, hey, if it makes me laugh, I did, did my job, you know? And, um, and I feel like that's a, a good way to start even approaching content, isn't thinking like, because I know sometimes a discouraging bit when you get into it is, you know, oh, it's hard to even, you know, oh, I'm not getting a lot of numbers, a lot of views, mm. a lot of subscribers, but if you're making the content for yourself, first and foremost, and you're enjoying what you're doing, that's good. Yes. And, and um, for me, since that's the approach that I had to it, I, you know, you start seeing comments come in, and when I had the first Bronies React that I created was really where my channel kicked off. And, you know, just getting to see a lot of the comments there, and, you know, there were, there were people, who, oh, Bronies this, and oh, yeah, Bronies that. <laughs> um, but it was starting to go to conventions, and, and you don't, I personally never would have guessed or you almost can't know that when you start having people come up to you and say that your content has saved my life, people telling you that the stuff that you're doing isn't just something that's like, oh, it made me laugh. Like saying like, no, you, you took me out of a depressive state. Like when I've had a bad day, I'm able to, you know, turn on my computer and watch one of your videos. And, and while I've been, I've been told this 
numerous times, it's still one of those things that every time you hear it, you just, you're just like, my gosh. Like, you don't realize the impact that you can have on people until you have that person come up to you and say that. And uh, one story that um, I, I think of is actually there was this, yeah, back in the day, uh, BronyCon 2013, it was the first BronyCon I ever went to out in Baltimore. And there was this little girl that was there who, who like ran up and I was with a group of my friends, a lot of us doing YouTube, like Jack's Blade and Saber Spark and, and a lot of them. And, um, and this girl runs up to us. I don't, know, I don't know how old she was. And I could probably do the math uh, knowing what I know now, which I'll explain. But, but I mean, she was young, you know, grade school. Um, and, and she was just so excited and she knew who all of us were. You know, she's naming, oh, it's Jack's Blade, Saber Spark. She even, like, you know, like, even some of us that were like, oh, dang, I didn't even know she'd know who this person was. And, and it, was so, it was so sweet. And then we, we noticed her dad was kind of sitting off to the side and, and observing everything. And um, he, so a couple of us walked over just to make sure like he wasn't like, like, oh, what's going on here? It's kind of weird. And my daughter's talking to all these grown men that I've never seen before. Um, and so we just wanted to check in and make sure like, oh, you're okay and we're not holding you up. And he's like, no, you guys don't understand that like, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened for her. And, and he got into telling us that at, back in school that she's been getting bullied um, and, and dealing with that, and it's been a really tough time for her. Um, and, and that he's like, this, is, this has made her year. You know, just being able to even see and talk with you guys. And, and it's just one of those things where you like, you sit back and go like, who would have thought? Like when I started making some joke content and having fun and goofing off that, that it's something that can literally change people's life. And, and this girl, her name was Grayson. Um, you know, you always hope when you leave something like that, like, I hope, I hope that this made her feel better. I hope that this helped her in some way. And just at this last Brony Con, the last one that they ever had, I was leaving a panel and all of a sudden I got a tap on the shoulder and I turned around and there's Grayson grown up. And, um, and she's telling, you know, she's like, yeah, I'm going to be going off to college this year. And it's like, oh my gosh, you're making me feel so old. <laughs> but it, it is, it is unbelievable. Like you don't realize it. And then someone tells you, and then you you just sit back and go like, oh, like I wish I, I genuinely wish that nobody needed the content to feel better. But the fact that we're able to help people out in that case, or, or like you say, walk around at conventions, the fact that I can, you know, give people some of my time and, and it, it makes their day or, or make, you know, that to me is one of the most special and coolest things about being a content creator that ever, I ever could have imagined. Nice. That's my answer. Awesome. Thank you. Now and for the goofy question. The, right? the goofy one, um, if you don't mind. No, let's do it. If there's one thing that you want to say to M.A. Larson right now, what is it? <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Uh, say I but, hate you, Viva. Say I, I hate you. But I don't. Say it. He's you do great. hate. <laughs> don't kiss his butt. Tell I'm, him. Tell him right now. He's watching. You're a little mediocre all sometimes. The way, <laughs> all the way from Australia, M.A. Larson. Yeah. Take that. They don't even know. Oh, he's, he's hung up. <laughs> Are you like on the phone with him? He's like crying right now. He, he will. Who here knows M.A. Larson? Yeah. You guys know M.A. Larson. Do you know? No? There were not a lot of people, so now everyone's like, wow, we just went from this really heartfelt story to raise best as a jerk. <laughs> M.A. Larson's one of the writers on the show, and he is... Fantastic. Sure. No, he's, he's a guy, like, we... Say, yeah, he gave, tw he gave Twilight Wings, everybody. He, we, we call him, like, the, the crazy uncle, um, at least, like, for Saber and I. He's, like, a crazy uncle who's, like... You just run into him. He, the last time I saw him, he showed up at one of our room parties with his like hat backwards. It was like, "Hey there, fellow kids! Like, what's up?" But um, but yeah, no, M. A. Larson. Um, if <laughs> he's he's definitely kind of like a definitely a show icon, but also kind of a fandom icon. He loves to sign a whole bunch of stuff when he ever shows up at conventions. So watch out, don't get near him. He has permanent markers, and he's not afraid to use them. Um, I know he's signed babies and all sorts of things, um, but but we oftentimes will get in these like jokingly, uh, well we call them jokingly, but they're totally real. Uh, but we'll get into like little bits with him. Um, last time I saw him, he smacked me with marshmallow cream. So you technically rarity. Yeah, yeah rarity. <laughs> Hello. So you have a question? 
Yeah, I got two questions. One, it depends on, well, I'm thinking moving videos and reviewing um, books or interesting highlights of um, books that, you know, real non-fiction about certain issues, but I'm not sure if I want to do it recording myself and not having a video of me or having me talk about it or having it get someone animated. I mean, I can't animate for anything. I have no clue how to do that, but what would your thoughts be on the best way to uh, make um, videos talking about certain subjects? Uh, something about books or parts of it. Is it so you want to do like reviews of books? And yeah, stuff? sections to talk about more expand about it. If if you want the there's there's different like um, so you can have like high production value. I'm gonna have like me be animated and like ch or like changing poses frequently, like uh, Saber Sparks videos. Um, he's been doing um, uh, definitely a, a quick and easy way. Oops, a, a quick and easy way. You can have um, like moving pictures is by having you behind the camera, um, which can be a lot more like appealing uh, uh, of a video than just like a static image, where it's just like, hello, um, I'm talking over a black screen or maybe a cover of a book or something, and that's not the most riveting thing. Um, so I would definitely say if uh, if if maybe if you're like uh, if you're camera shy, then you can get away with. Um, Still doing, maybe you could. And if you're Fluttershy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not yellow, am I? No. <laughs> yeah, but, but um, so there, there's lots of different like ways you can present yourself um, doing like these kinds of what? That is something people do. Yeah, that's yeah. like, lots of people do do like that. I being a pony, but, but I, the, I'm afraid to get in the M.A. Larson. I might pop some wings and everything might lash out. See, you understand the M.A. Larson yeah. terror that yeah, there is. Yeah, I joined a fandom in 2013. God just bless this, this country for having fan. so few people that understand how terrible M.A. Yeah, Larson I mean, is. I, oh. I, got in mid, I got in the fandom mid-2013 when Mrs. showed me Magic Duel because I love, I love Star Wars. And she's like, hey, look, you found it. It's funny. And that's how it got started on in the fandom. Watching that, I was like, oh my god, that is actually true. But well, then, when, and then a few months later, the Twilight Corn um, outburst hit. I'm like, okay, what the hell just happened? <laughs> yeah, as far as as far as people were saying though, right, like, yeah. like moving pictures and whatnot, I've like I try to incorporate that too whenever I'm doing more informational type videos. Yeah, right. I just it just it's it's, a lot it's amazing how Sorry. how just the slightest edit to a picture, just doing this. Versus sitting still. Oh, it adds a lot. Yeah. Like if you, ha um, whenever I'm making like a video, I never like sitting on like a static image, like pretty much ever. Which, by the way, means that you will never re re release videos ever because you're spending seven years uh, editing them. That's I, true. I know that one thing, one very quick, easy, kind of cheaty way to do it is record game footage and put that in the background uh, uh, over like a talky video. Um, that's something that, that like gained like popularity over a long period of time because like then your eyes are just like I, I'm entertained by the moving pictures, but I'm still listening to the audio. Um, Those always throw me off though because I assume the person's playing while they're talking. Yeah, exactly. And they're just like, yeah, so I'm here to talk to you about this drama that's happening on the internet, and they're like, and, and <laughs> all this stuff's going on. I'm like, wow, like that is multitasking. Or something. Incredible. Yeah. I, I must get the kill, my kill card out while I talk to you about a serious issue. Hang on a second. Yeah, got it. <laughs> now, did you say you had uh, a couple questions? Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I was, I'm sorry. Second one's more um, funny wise, but I know you, of your infamous uh, philosophy of thinking deep video. Philosophy of being deep. The, you know, you, you know, you know, yes, you, yes, the, yes. you know, or you know, I can't remember the name, but you know, the one where it's just philosophy of doing all. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, Did he uh, voice that over? Uh, that no, that was <laughs> that was a song by Jean Jacques Perry. Uh, oh, it's an um, actual song. Just yeah, it's a song called Mary France, um, and I animated to it using uh, Celestia going, ah, um, and it became a very popular video. And that was that was a fun thing. Lots of people. See, and how do you explain the success on some of our videos? I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, which. Oh. She went there again. The thing about that oh. one... She flew to the castle. It's she okay. Did. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Um, the thing about that one in particular is that it, like, kind of gained, like, meme status, like, outside of, like... Like, I, I have, like, videos that, that are, like, central to like, to, like, my channel. And, like, people who watch my videos will get that joke. 
People who are nowhere near my videos still know what Celestia being deep is. Um, and that's like, that's nuts uh, for me, but it's, it, it's great. Um, did, did I answer your question? I'm sorry. Uh. I think Actually, you did. No, yeah, yeah, okay. I think, I think right. you did. I okay. think you did, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. All right, well, thank you. Thank All right. you. All right. Um, do we start here? Oh, what? Are you in? Um, what, what, how did you, um, like, um... You're not in line. That's cheating. <laughs> yeah. Well, what were you saying? How do you, how do you like Emma Larson's book when you were reading it? <laughs> you think I wasted time reading his book? I read, <laughs> I read, I read half of the My first wife's one. read his book. It's weird. Like, they have, like, a, like, a... Hey, what's up, dude? Relationship, and I'm like, no, no, be nice. Hello. Yeah. That's gonna be our like our thing. I'm gonna have people start drop kicking it. Yeah, I show. feel like it should be like <laughs> rotated just a little bit. There we go. That's why the legs aren't there. Um, my main question is, um, when you're able to do so many things like um, like being an artist and playing video games and that, how do you? Um, Typically, a lot of the more popular channels are generally based on one thing, like you have generally a gaming channel or like an artist kind of channel and they gain a lot of popularity through that one focus. How do you get the motivation to be at and like the selectiveness to choose which one of your talents to kind of chase up and to gain uh, an audience behind? And how do you keep, the, motiva your time? How do you keep yeah. the motivation to uh, actually get first, past that first hurdle of actually making content? I think... The issue with like, I think I think this the the like, the thing with making content is it's it's always like, like you can make content for an audience, or you can make content for yourself for an audience. Um, and my thought is that like if you're going to make content, you should make something that would entertain you. Um, and likewise, it. It, it motivates you to make that content in the first place. And other like-minded people um, will come along and be like, yes, I enjoy this because you enjoy it and other people will have similar tastes to you. That's always been um, my mantra when, um, when saying, when like telling people, okay, so if you want to make content, make something that you would enjoy, um, which would then circumvent like the hurdles in the first place. Uh, the issue is, is that sometimes you think you like making something and then you run into hurdles anyway. I think it's like the difference of something being a hobby to something being a job, where suddenly instead of it being like, I'm making this because I want to make this, it's I'm making this because I have to make this. And that can be demotivating. Demotiv I know it has been for me. Um, Causes in the past. burnout too. Exactly. Yeah. The burnout, um, like, yeah, it, it's natural to everyone, I think. Um, like having times where it's just like, oh, I should kind of probably be making something, but I'm not, and I really am not motivated to do it. Even if, even though I make like content that I know I like make, I, I like um, watching and seeing, um, it can be a bit much sometimes. My, my suggestion for overcoming that hurdle is to, there, there was a suggestion, I, uh, I remember hearing this from a, uh, 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 Daniel Avedon of, of Ninja Sex Party, who says, um, if you're going to work on something, uh, do at least something every day. That something can be like two minutes in an editing program. It can be like one click, or it could be five hours. Um, so long as you're doing something every day, you're always making progress to it being completed. That's how I approach my job. There you the go. Way. There you like, go. Like my engineering work, they're like, why haven't you done anything? And I'm like, I did a click <laughs> all day. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, you get fired doing that. But, right. but I get your point. No, like, yeah, I yeah. totally, yeah. Um, as far as, like, the diversifying, like, again, I have a lot of random stuff on my channel. And it's stuff that, like, again, like, from the low budgets, like, I still got a whole bunch of stuff in the pipeline that I'm working on um, that's from, like, way back that I'm like, no, I'm going to get to it. For me, it helps making a schedule and then laying out all the projects that I have that I want to do um, and, and like in this bracket of time, like six months. And then if there's some stuff that I'm like, I'll get to it eventually, I'll just kind of write it down. It's good to write down ideas, by the way, yeah. because they do leave your mind and you go, oh, what was I, was there something else I wanted to do? Mm. But um, yeah, so what I'll do is like, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of make a priority list and be like, okay, if we have a bronies rack that we're working on, um, you know, that's going to get 
all this time of mine. And then I try to work on smaller stuff too. Um, like I, again, with like a lot of the vlogs and stuff that I'll, I'll work on. Um, I call that not like con vlogs, but like other kind of vlogs I'll do. I call it filler content where I try to have some stuff like kind of logged. So if I'm stuck working on a Bronies rack for a couple weeks, I can have that stuff upload while I'm working over here on this, on this editing. So, yeah. So, so there's, it's really just kind of, uh, picking and choosing. And sometimes it's, it's a matter of, you know, choosing your favorite children or, I forget the phrasing now, but uh, basically just kind of uh, deciding. It doesn't mean you have to drop any of the other projects. It's just sometimes you want to hold other ones off to focus on the ones that might get a little bit more attention. So Yeah. yeah. Um, I also had another uh, question uh -huh. for, uh, for each of your specific channels. Um, how do you get your ideas for, uh, for your channel? Because yours is a lot more... Uh, sort of random-esque, and um, I've noticed there were like two renditions of the whole horse walking into a bar thing. One of them was like a, had something to do with like That's French right. So yeah. the, the, the first one of those, uh, if I remember correctly, was a school project that was just like a quick animation project. I'm like, okay, and a joke I make at the very start of that was um, the sun and the moon are both in the sky. And then later, the show does the same thing where this says sun and the moon in the sky. Yeah. And so I decided to make like a second version of the video that starts the same. Mm -hmm. But then my character interrupts saying, oh, uh, I did this first. That was me. <laughs> I, I made this joke first before the show did it. And so um, that's what that was for. I'm sorry, that was a tangent. Were you asking something? Oh, yeah, it was, it was just basically like, how, how do, do I, you like, yes. brainstorm for ideas like those um, kind of videos? Definitely. Uh, takes a hammer and does yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I do? I have a big list of like jokes. Um, and uh, you know, I, don't, I don't refer to this list anymore, but back when I was making those videos, I, this is how I did it. I had a list of jokes. Um, and essentially, I'm like, OK. Um, and, 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 oh whoa! Out of nowhere, I just thought up another joke. Add that to the list. And then when I want to make it, when, when I wanted to make a video, I need to say this in past tense because I do video slightly differently now. Yep. Um, I took one of those jokes and I wrote a script around it. Like for example, <laughs> in I, I made a video called the mystical uh, wa uh, horse of water or water horse, mm. whatever it was. And the joke I took was, oh n oh, it's a mirage. Uh, I mean an oasis. Um, and wrote a script around that, and that's like a joke in the video, mm -hmm. but it's like only one joke of like 20. Um, and so that's that's just like an interesting yeah. sort of, I, that's a way You've I- You gotta get those extra minutes for monetization. No, 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 no it's, that's not what I do. I don't, I don't care about the monetization. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, I, if I have a funny script, then it's gonna end when I'm out of jokes. Mm. Um, so yeah, anyway. Like I mean, James had in that, um, the Slice of Life Friends director's make had a list of jokes. Yep, yeah. <laughs> yep. So we have, by the way, just uh, real minutes. quick, we have, we have, yeah, like one and a half minutes. So we will make sure we yeah. get through uh, 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 the rest uh, of the time. So we got to go quick. Yes. What was yours? Oh yeah. Back. And out of, I understand you do demolition derby. Yep. Is there any car that you were proud to smash? That I was like, proud of. Every one of them, I'm proud to every smash. Every one of them. <laughs> they, uh, for those that don't know, we paint up the demolition derby cars as ponies, as characters on the show, um, and as as Utopia characters as well. Um, and yeah, I, I've always I always love seeing. The one, I think my favorite car I ever drove was the Judy Hopps car uh, that my that my wife created. It's got these big old ears, and uh, yeah, things went well in that car as well. But yeah, nice. thank you. Thank you. And those are, that's the low budgets for anyone that doesn't know. So we will get through these uh, last two questions. I want to mention really quickly, though, uh, does everyone here know what Hooves Line is? Yeah. Right, anyone that doesn't, by a raise of hands, anyone who's like, what's Hooves Line? Oh, All right. Here. Hooves Line, which is a show that's going to be coming up in about an hour from now, is an improv comedy show. Viva's going to be on it. I'm going to be on it. It's a show that we've taken all throughout conventions in the States. Um, it's the first time I'll ever be like, hosting slash doing it by myself because the team that I usually do it with, including Saber Spark or Black Griffin or a lot of other people, uh, not animated James, no, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, uh, it's going to be crazy just comedy stuff for an hour. Uh, you don't want to miss it. Nicole's also going to be taking part in it as well. So really quickly, we'll get through these last okay. two questions. Speed round. Who is best pony? Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash. <gasps> I'm not going to, I'm not going to no, take no, you no, down. No. I hurt my ankle the last time I did it, but that was really good answer. Yeah. Do you hear that? I hear that, Saber Spark? Uh, Take that. No, Saber you, I, said something mean. I, every now and then, I'm like, oh, ask me on different days as Pinkie Pie. Sometimes it's Rainbow Dash. Sometimes I say cheese sandwich. <laughs> but I knew when I'm sitting next to you, it is Rainbow Dash. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And then our last... I think you mean Derpy. Oh. No. Oh. But Derpy's cool, too. Oh. Derpy. oh. Yeah, I did that at Brony Con when you were like, both of you were like, my favorite pony's Rainbow Dash. And you like fell back. 
You saw that? That hurt. Okay, okay. I still have a bruise on my we ankle. We need to... So, uh, did you have a question oh, to yeah, finish um, off? How long does it take usually to make a Bronies react? Bronies react. Ooh, uh, it takes... It's honestly about uh, three weeks to a month of work. Um, it starts with me sending out formats to everybody um, and just figuring out who's going to be on them. Um, and then uh, the formats basically just kind of lay out. Here's here's a. I'm sure nobody even reads them anymore because everyone's gotten them I, numerous times. I double times. check every now and then. Once upon a time, it's just like, oh, react to the blah blah open up. No, we're reacting to the, to the finale. Yeah. <laughs> you like didn't that. Sometimes it, right? I have. Yeah. So so um, yeah, I'll do that. And then uh, once I get everybody's footage, we tie everything together, and it a uh, couple weeks of editing to to get it out. So it's about a month worth turned around. So yeah. Yeah, well, thank you. And thank you, everybody, for coming out to the How to YouTube panel. You were great. Uh, again, we're going to have a Bronies Rack panel tomorrow, but do not miss Hooves Line Hooves coming line. up in about an hour. So thank we'll you see you there. Thank you very much.